So in Key Stage 1, children are given lots of opportunities to count in equal steps, starting with 2s, 10s and 5s, and then progressing to 3s, 4s, and then eventually 6, 8, 9 and 7. So you can use anything at home to practice, for example, buttons, beads, anything you've got at home. Um, practicing this is a really important foundation to learning multiplication facts and times tables later on. One of the first methods in Key Stage 1 is multiplication as repeated addition, usually represented by dots in boxed groups. For example, here we have a number sentence, 5 times 3, and then I've put it into context with a word problem. There are 5 pencils in a pack, how many pencils in 3 packs? So we can draw three boxes representing the packs and then we can put five dots in each box to represent the pencils. And then we can add the three lots of five to make 15 and put in the final answer to the original question. Multiplication at Key Stage 1 can also be represented as an array. In this example, we have 4 times 3, and again, we can put this into context. A sweet costs 4p, how much do 3 sweets cost? And as you can see, I've drawn 3 rows of 4, um, but you could do it the other way around as four rows of three. This helps very much with the understanding that you've got that four times three is the same as three times four. And then we can write the numbers by the side and add the columns. So three plus three plus three plus three, which is three times four, or we can add rows four plus four plus four four times three and see that both the answer gives 12. And then we can write the final answer to the original question. Children in Key Stage 1 are also introduced to multiplication using a number line. And with this example, I've given you 6 times 4, and let's put this one into context again. Each There are 4 dogs, each dog has 6 puppies, how many puppies are there all together? So we can draw an empty number line and count on in equal steps, recording each jump. So here we will do 4 jumps of 6, so first we'll jump then we will jump another 6 to get 12, then another 6 to get 18, and then our last final fourth jump to 24, which gives us our final answer of 24. Now, when numbers get bigger, as in this example, 13 times 7, it's a bit cumbersome to do lots of small jumps, so if your child has grasped the earlier concept, they can then move on to splitting a number like 13 into parts 10 and 3. First we draw an empty number line and we put 0 at one end. Then our first jump is 10 lots of 7, which gets us to 70. And then we do our next jump, the three part of 13 times 7, which is 21, and gets us to 91 on the number line. And then we can finally write 70 plus 21 makes 91. And so therefore, 13 times 7 equals 91. The next method I'm going to show you is partitioning. That basically just means splitting the digits into their tens and units. And this is done throughout both key stages and the level of difficulty is 
really based on the number of digits you are multiplying by. So I will give two examples to demonstrate this. So here we've got 43 times 5 and we can split or partition the 43 into four tens being 40 and three units. And then we can multiply the 40 now by five to make 200 and then the three by five to make 15. Then all we have to do is we need to add the two answers together, 200 plus 15 equals 215. So therefore 43 times five equals 215. I'm just going to do one more example now, multiplying a three digit number by a single digit. Again, we partition the 123 into 100s, tens and units, so we have 123. And then we multiply each of those by 5, so 100 times 5 equals 500, 20 times 5 equals 100, and 3 times 5 equals 15. Then we add those all up, 500 plus 100 plus 15 equals 615. And then put the answer back into the original number sentence, 123 times 5 equals 615. The next method is the grid method, usually introduced in lower key stage 2. Now this helps the children really visualise the partitioning and understand how each digit needs to be multiplied by every digit. Here we have 43 times 5 and I've drawn a blank grid and here we can partition or split the 43 into 40 and 3 and write it down one side of the grid and then we can put the 5 at the top. Then we multiply each of the numbers by each other so 40 times 5 equals 200 and 3 times 5 equals 15. The two answers then can be added together, 200 plus 15 equals 215. And therefore we can go back to the original question, 43 times 5 equals 215. Now looking at another example, 123 times 5. We can do exactly the same thing. We split the 123 into 120 and 3 and write it down the side and then write 5 at the top. Then as before, we multiply each of these out. So 100 times 5 equals 500, 20 times 5 equals 100 and 3 times 5 equals 15. Then we can add those up, 500 plus 100 plus 15 equals 615. And then put those into the original answer, 123 times 5 equals 615. I'll show one further example for a three digit number. I won't talk through this one, I'll just click it through to just show you how it works. Okay, so the next method I'm going to show you is the expanded short method in Key Stage 2 which then moves on to the compact method which is introduced into upper, upper key stage two, which is the method probably you're most familiar with and probably was the one that you were taught at school. 
here we have 38 times 7. What we do here is we represent the method of recording in a column format but showing the working. So it has similarities to the grid method but we just need to remember that the digits should be referred to as the actual value, for example 30 times 7 and not 3 times 7. So the first thing we do is the units 8 times 7 and record it at the side, 8 times 7 equals 56, and then write it underneath. Next, we do the same with the three tens, 30 times 7 equals 210, and write that in exactly the same way as before. Then we can add these two answers together, 56 and 210, to give the final answer of 266. Finally, we move on to the last stage, the compact method, which is probably the one you're most familiar with. Here we have 38 times 7. And I multiply the units first, 8 times 7 equals 56, and carry the 5 tens. Sometimes children do carry the tens and put it above, which is absolutely fine. Then I multiply the three tens by seven, which is 210, and then remember to add the 50, which is 260, giving a final answer of 266. Now the next stage would be to multiply a two digit by a two digit using this method and then to make it harder still a three digit by a two digit and so on. Hopefully you found that useful. I've come to the end of the slideshow now and have a better understanding of how multiplication is taught in schools across the key stages. It probably is very different to how you were taught in school so hopefully this has given you some guidance on how best to support your child.